Make sure you, oh, we got it? Yeah. Woo! Hey everybody, I do believe it's 12 noon. Minnie, we got 12 noon? Yeah. Okay everybody, here we go. It is Festool Friday, that means it's Festool Live. And we're checking our phones to see if we're still live streaming. And we are. I'm waiting. And there's a pause. And it takes a delay. It takes a delay. And we're going. Boy, this. Yep. Oh! Yep. Okay. So That's sorry. the. Sorry, we're good. We're good. Do I have to start over? No, you're good, sir. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. Green light. Whew. Thank you, YouTube. All right, <laughs> the beauty of going live. Hey, everybody, this is episode 163, and I'm gonna introduce the room really quick. Over here, we have Christine. Woohoo! Behind the camera, we have Chris, the unit, Cybert. See how I added the T? Mm -hmm. You like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Online, we have Brent Shively. He's answering all your questions for you. And behind the board, tell us where you're from. We have Min Min. Woo! We already have one side of the board. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Hey, everybody. I haven't said this in a while. We're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. Uh, make sure you uh, give us a shout on both and subscribe to both and hit the notification bell so you never miss a Festool Live. How's that? Beautiful. Chris is nodding. I did my due diligence today. Yep. Okay, we're doing good. All right. So, how did I come up with this one? We're calling it the Domino Edge. And I went back through my notes over the years and I said, what are some of the highlights that we have in some of the classes we used to offer here? And this one was a kind of a, a neat highlight when you're using a Domino. Uh, and I'm gonna cover a lot about the use of the Domino 500, but can, you can also use it with the uh, 700 as well. Okay, uh, one of the things that when, and this is, this is basically what we're building today. We're building a shelf. This was in the bookcase. We have a nice edge on here, and this is perfectly flush, all right? Now, to get it perfectly flush, and if we look, hopefully you can get this, Chris. Look how thin that veneer is, okay? It gets thinner, I think, every week from the plywood manufacturer, all right? So one of the things that happens and I saw, and somebody in class said, well, you don't put it perfectly flush. Mm, why, <laughs> I would say. And uh, he said, well, I always put it a little bit proud, a millimeter or two millimeters proud, and I work it down because, and I would say, why? And they would say, well, I want to, well, the reason is this, okay? Plywood is usually 18 millimeters. Okay, but over the years, and this is actually some pretty consistent plywood, but over the years I have seen it range, let me turn my caliper on, I have seen it range from, there's 17, 18 and a half, over here it might be 18, but I've seen it dip into the 17 millimeter. In other words, as the plywood rolls, there's so many inconsistencies because you could hit a void inside the layers. And in here, I thought I had some voids, but I don't. See, there might be a void there. So what you gotta do is you gotta compensate for those inconsistencies. So if we look here, okay, this is a, a drop edge. What it is is a molding edge on a shelf. And that's what I'm basically showing. But you can use this technique I show you or this tip and trick on the domino for many other things in your joinery, whether you're putting a frame on a case or whatever. So what this person asks or mentioned, he goes, I'd like to put it a little bit proud. And a little bit proud to me means a lot of extra work. This is about three millimeters proud. So then you have to flush it. And one of the things that comes into play when you're flushing it, like this one, okay, is you have to deter, you have to find a way to do it so you don't cut into what? That thin veneer on the top. I've always made my drop edges proud and worked it down flush, but I don't want to have to work a lot of it. So I'm gonna show you a technique. I'm gonna make it a half a millimeter proud. I'm gonna grab a piece over here. Chris, come over here so we can see this. I'm gonna make it, I did some glue ups yesterday, so it's, a, it's almost flush. 
And that's not hard to do with the domino, and, it, and you don't even have to think about it if you have shim stock. You could use edge banding. I choose this. Now, let's jump back to why you put a drop edge or a lip or a molding edge, whatever you want to call it, on a shelf. There's two reasons. When you're looking at the shelf, one is aesthetics. That's beautiful. It's a little bit thicker than the plywood. It looks like a real piece of wood. The other reason is if you have a large span on a bookshelf and you have significant weight on there, over the years you may get some sag in there on that span. Well, what this does is this actually shores it up a lot more and makes sure, and, and it makes sure that you don't have sag. Hopefully I explained that properly. I've seen people actually build a shelf with an I-beam in the middle. Um, there's several ways to do it. I like to do it with a decorative molding edge. All right, so I'm gonna get this out of the way. Next, let's do the basic setup of the domino. I'm gonna take, and I ripped these yesterday at 30 millimeters in height. Just double check my, my math on this. I think I did 30, yep, 30. 30 millimeters in height, all right? <clears throat> and I'm, as I go through this, I'll, you'll see that some of the techniques I use with the domino. Hopefully it'll open your brain up a little. Okay, so one of the things I always do with the domino is I check, and I label everything, but I check my machine first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a five by 30 domino, five being the thickness, and 30 being the length. So Minnie, yeah. what's half of 30? Man, she's the best metric person I know. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna, one, check to see if this is a five millimeter, and it is, because it says five right on there. I'm gonna pop it back on here. And now, I'm gonna check my plunge depth. I'm gonna take this little tab, move it forward, and bring it to 15, so I plunge exactly 15 and 15 into each piece. One of the reasons I chose 15 is the thickness of this walnut or cherry, whatever I'm gonna use, I don't wanna plunge all the way through, okay? And I wanna plunge in about 15 millimeters in case I do a decorative uh, detail on it later on. <clears throat> you can do the decorative detail uh, before you do your domino, it doesn't matter. Uh, whichever way you feel more comfortable using the domino. Okay, next, and here's the part I wanna Slow down a little because this can be very confusing. Okay, I determined that this wood or this plywood is roughly 18. I don't have to be exactly in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna use my, pl my plunge depth we determined is 15. Okay, my plate height, okay, which is right here. That's the gauge block we're gonna use and this is why this, this uh, tip will really cement in your head when, because I'm gonna be using a gauge block for everything. I'm gonna set it down here for the plywood and I'll put plate height equals 20 millimeters. Okay, now, what that actually means is that's the thickness of the material that is in that little window. We have a secondary scale on the Domino 500 that that reads 10. So the distance from my plate to the center is 10 millimeters. Hopefully everybody's following that. Okay, always on the Domino 500, what appears in the window is the thickness of the material. That's why I think people sometimes get a little discombobulated on that. I, <clears throat> I labeled my board here. I'm gonna, this is my face, my, piece is gonna go on just like this, okay? Uh, I always, and then I can always trim it afterwards. I just wanna show you how to achieve that half a millimeter offset. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that over there. Now, I got everything labeled the way I want it. I don't wanna to have to measure anymore. The distance, so my first mortise is gonna be from this flap, which is to the center, is 37 millimeters. And then I'm gonna put two more in here, and I'm gonna use these. These are called the cross stops. Whenever you put these on the machine, there's a little dovetail on there, and that's your pin, and you lock it. So this gives you another reference point, and that was just a little bit loose. It reads right here, 150 millimeters to the inside cursor, and that is 
will space it when I, you'll see when, on the, when I shoulder it on the side of that first mortise, it'll put me 150 millimeters away from that, roughly six inches. I'm gonna put the other one on here and you're gonna see in a few minutes why I put both of them on and why I put an arrow here and an arrow here. That's why I need both of these stops on here. And that's the part sometimes people get confused on. Okay, so let's get hooked up. I got everything locked and loaded. I always verify that I'm at that 90 degree Mac. And I'm just gonna take my plug it cord and hose and get going on here. Now, uh, hopefully the mic is, as I'm using the machine, Hopefully you can hear me on this. I think we still can. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna do the first one in the tight position. You can always tell, Chris, come on up here, that I have shouldered that by that triangle. See how it's shouldered? And I'm just gonna plunge. Nice and easy. Now the second one, I'm gonna do uh, um, I'm gonna give it a little lateral tolerance, and I'm gonna take my pin, I'm gonna put it in there, and I'm gonna shoulder it. And then I'm gonna do the third one. <clears throat> Just like this. Making sure that that plate is dead flat on there, and I'm working off the table. Now what I'm gonna do, because I know I have to, whatever happens on here, I'm gonna turn that to the tight position so I don't forget. So what you have, and you'll see you have tight, loose, loose. Okay, and that plate to the center is 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna plop this on here again so you can see that. How are we looking, Christine, good? Okay, so let's go back to the Wenda right here. If I release my plate height here, I have 22. But that's the thickness of the material. That will give me a what? A one millimeter offset. And if you want to do it that way, great. Okay, but it's just going to be more work leveling it. I don't like to work. <laughs> okay, so what I like to do, there is no half a millimeter offset. So what I like to do, and I'm gonna remove this just for clarity. I put 20 in there, and then I take some shim stock, and that's a half a millimeter, and where that hits, oh, I can't see, you're in the way, Chris, a little oh, bit. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so you see where that hits? I push it down, and I lock it in, and then I pull my shim stock. I make sure it's locked well, so it doesn't move, and then I put this back on, this left side cross stop. Hopefully this is all making, set for, uh, making sense for you. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, and this is why I put the arrow. You remember I went this way, and I used this side of the cross stop. Now I gotta go this away, and that's gonna be my face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that, and what happens on here, has the same sequence happens on here. So I'm gonna go tight, loose, loose, and we'll see where we end up, okay? Hopefully I said everything correctly. I got it, Chris? Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and grab that flap. And you notice I put extra boards here. That gives me support, nice and steady. I don't try to balance on just that. I put support here. And then I'm gonna switch it into the loose position. I'm gonna make sure I have that exactly where I want it. Make it so that plate is flat. And then do another one. Just like this. Make it sure I take that and shoulder it just right. So when I do that, okay, I have those three. I'm just gonna take it and get a domino here. Ooh, right when you think you have everything set up. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna get that in there. See, I have, still have that glue line, but I have the wiggle room back and forth. And let's see where we're at. Okay, so I'm gonna take that. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Look at that, and look at that. So I wish you we had feel a vision on here. <laughs> okay. But the nice thing about that tight setting, it's tight here and tight here, right? Like I said, I wish I had feel a vision. See that right there? That's absolutely perfect. So what I would do, and I did this yesterday, just take a fine line before my glue up and get it close. Boy, that fell apart nicely. And get, <laughs> make sure you remember where you put that, Chris. Get it close. Then I would take it over, hit it with the K-Pex, and then go into glue up. And then I would have my final, my fi and then I would do my final trimming on that, okay? But that gives you that half a millimeter offset. So come on over here. Whew. Okay. Um, I am going to show you a couple different techniques. There are several ways to level this. I've seen people set up router tables with a flush trim bit and run this edge up against that flush trim bit that's in a fencing system. That works. I've seen people take a trim router horizontally and go like this, but you stand that chance of it dipping. It's real, it can be really problematic. We have a couple router options this one is the MFK 700 with the zero degree base, but it only goes up to 916. So this is out for the MFK 700. Your capacity is limited on that. Then we have another option, and I think it was episode 123. There you go, unit. You got it. And it was, and I, I want to call this out because I actually did this operation with uh, the OF-1010, the edging plate, the deflector, and the angle arm. And I took it and leveled it absolutely perfect, just like this, okay? This is something that goes missing in the catalog. That's why we have lost in the catalog. I show you the setup and how everything works in there, and that is called out in the description. Okay, so this one's out, this one works. For me, this one, works really well. It's just a few swipes, but you have to be cognizant of cutting into that veneer. So a hand plane, when using a hand plane, you can work it like this, okay, but always be aware of where you're at on it, okay, and taking it down. Now that's almost flush. You can also use, because it's only half a millimeter, you can use a cabinet scraper, okay, and take it down, and I've done that quite often. That is a very, how do you say, slow process, but it's very forgiving because you know when you've hit that, you start to scrape and it's very shallow cuts with a CAD scraper. And you know when you start to scrape, because look, I'm gonna show you right now, I can scrape that right off like that. That's how fine those shavings can be. Just an easy way. So I call a card scraper my first step before sandpaper. <laughs> Okay, because I always call this steel sandpaper. It works great. I love using CAD scrapers. But over here, and I have to be careful because with my samples, I started leveling this with my hand plane. That's almost perfect. But I left a little here, I left a little here. I was working something a few years ago at my home shop, and I discovered something that I wanted to make sure I showed you. It's another leveling process. It worked out fantastic, but you have to be very aware what your work, where your sander is. So I always choose the RO90 for this, and I always put the pad that comes with it is your medium pad or soft pad. I always put a hard pad on there because I can actually get in here and I can watch that front edge and come right to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple options on there. You can do it in Rotex mode, you can do it in random orbit mode. I always tell everybody when you start doing it with this technique for leveling, and it can be quick, I always say start slow and put in the random orbit. Those are the fine dots. Now, when you're doing this, okay, you don't want to burn through that veneer. So you have to be very aware. What I do, just because of lighting situations, I always, and I did this at home when I did it, I put a light here. Okay, so it really pops where I'm going. You have to make sure, come in here so we can see this, you're at a 90, you don't want to do this. 
you want to make sure you're up on it like this and you are concentrating on that line. And I'll tell you what, it will disappear really quick. So just, I mean, if I had it in Rotex, which I'll do down here, come down here, Chris. You have to be <laughs> aware, because Rotex will take that down so quick, it's ridiculous. So that's how, you, that's how you work it. And maybe, maybe it's probably between the two. But don't go like this, because you can burn through real quick. So that's just several ways you can level it, and it won't take much time because of using that shim stock on the repeatability of that gauge block on the Domino 500. That way there, you will come out with a perfect edge like that, nice and flush. All right? It's not about, it's about the, it's about the plywood. The plywood is not as consistent as it should be. So give yourself a little, uh, a little wiggle room, but not too much wiggle room on uh, giving yourself a reveal so you can finally flush it. Hopefully that came across. Hopefully that was some tips and tricks that you guys can all use. Um, that wasn't bad, huh? <laughs> it's like I kind of got lost. That was uh, 20 minutes. Wow. Uh, right what I thought it would be. Hey, uh, hey, you guys want to hear something really cool? I was ripping this uh, hardwood yesterday with uh, the CSC 50. Oh my God, is that an awesome saw. I love it. It's so cool. Oh, that's such a great saw. It was funny. I had two or three people come in and go, hey, man, that's nice. I go, oh, yeah. All right, everybody. Wow, Minnie. Minnie, you're on like three boards, huh? Holy macanoli. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna start calling everybody out. Oh my God. We have Alex Bengals from Connecticut. Every time I see the initials for Connecticut, I think of CT dust extractor. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, we have Jason from Fenton, Michigan. We have Ray from Pensacola, Norman from Germany, Michelle from Paris, Joe from Wasika, Illinois, Doug Z from, oh, no, it's Doug from Zville, which is Zionsville. That's right around the corner from us. Mike Martinez from Austin, Texas. We have Mark S. from Woodcraft Springfield. We have Ed from the Big Island, Hawaii. Des from Harrogate, England. Paul, Cheryl, Sam from Anthem, Arizona. Petri from Finland. Cal from Bucharest. Minnie, is that a first? Yes. Woo! Bucharest, I love that. Okay, we have Brandon from Olathe, Kansas. We have Yana and Jason from Washington. Leo from Holland. Jacob from Rhode Island. Mac from Calgary, Alberta. Johnny Ringo from CS Port, Maine. Maine, that's a cool place. Chris from Malta. Wow, boy, Woodcraft. Dayton staff, you guys are always there with us. Welcome, hey, you guys know Dirk? You know Dirk from Dayton? He's on here. He's right after you. Woo! Tom and Kelly from Georgia. Eatonton, Georgia. Rick from Sunny Blackpool, England. Dale from England. Mac from LA, California. LA, Chris, I just found out it's Los Angeles. Monty from Canton, Connecticut. Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. Blake Weber from Novato, California. Aaron Gella from Kalamazoo, Michigan. How you doing, Aaron? Willie Spock, Trishan. Dave from Georgetown, Ontario. <laughs> Michelle C. from Winchester, Virginia. Oliver. Woo! Met you last year, Oliver, from Southern California. Good to have you here, buddy. We have Jeff from Clarksburg, Maryland. Bermuda Steve. Mark from Anaheim, California. Mac from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Wow, Julian from Lausanne, Switzerland. I wonder how far North Carolina is from Lausanne, Switzerland. 20 miles. Google that, Chris. Okay, hey, 20 miles. Soren from Denmark. Rodrigo from Colombia. Wow, Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. William from Hatfield, Virginia. Garrett Sato from Lebanon. Hey, that's Fumio. All right. Hey, we have Joseph from Bellevue, New Nebraska. The Warped Woodsman from Portland. 
Dragon from Serbia. Josh from Iowa. Woo! Marlo Joinery in Ibstock, UK. How you guys doing? Maddie, my main man Maddie from Cincinnati. Roll from Olvega, the Netherlands. <laughs> Retro builds from Merced, California. Mike from Oahu, Hawaii. Andy from Mississauga, Ontario. That would be Canada. We have Rob from Devonshire, England. Dick from Katy, Texas. Joe, my main man Joe from Akron, Ohio. Dave Otavia from Israel. Randy from Roscoe, Illinois. Gary, Gary from Plano, Texas. Matt from Tinley Park, Illinois. He even puts the S's in there. Mac from Crimpen, Dandelek, Netherlands. We have Dan from Whitestone, New York. We have Abba Carpentry from the UK, or ABA Carpentry from the UK. We have Rich from Jacksonville, Dave from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, Kevin from San Diego, Jeff and Jill from Cut and Shoot, Texas. They went up the hill. Okay, Matt from Newark, Ohio, Yusuf from Bahrain. Hey, is that the first time we had Bahrain? It's new to me. Woo! That's a cool place, I've heard. Gabor from Hungland, from Hungland, from Hungary. Oh my goodness gracious. Troy from Mechanicsville, Virginia. Paul from Tucson, Arizona. We have Thomas from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Dale from Hillsdale, Michigan. Gail from Eden, New York. Steve from Fort Wayne. Jeff from Cincinnati. Paul from Reading, UK. Dan, my man from Arizona. Stefan from Quartite, Arizona. Chris from Vermont. Ryan from Indy. Hey, Ryan. Brad from LaGrange, Indiana. Greg from Lake Vermilion, Vermilion uh, Minnesota. Tim from Livingston, New Jersey. Sherman from Massachusetts. Or is it Sherman, Massachusetts? Who knows? Austin from Eastport, New York. Michael Wolfville, Nova Scotia. That's a cool name. Wolfville. Zoltan from Hungary. T. Fraz from Massachusetts. Erho from Helsinki, Finland. Steven from Buckeye, Arizona. Apo from A -A 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 Finland. Dave and Gwen, there she is. It's Gwen from West Virginia. We have Daniel from Baratwil, Switzerland. Alex from Moreland, Texas. Andy from Riga, Latavia. Alan from Austin, Texas. Give, Jeeve, I know how to pronounce your name. I'm still forgetting. Wicked cool guy from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Man, it was really nice meeting you at Hatville, brother. Johan Bach. <laughs> Did you see that? Johan Bach from Holland is here. Luck from Luxembourg, or Luke from Luxembourg. Minnie, can I toy? Wow. We. I do not know why there's not an 18 millimeter thickness setting. I did not know something. I wish there was. Okay, Vince from Madison, Mississippi. Yuzu from Paramaribo, Suriname. Last week, friend from Sylvania. We just missed them. I can't remember their name. It was like an owl something, but we just hung up when their name showed up. Oh, and yeah, 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 owl. Yeah. Al something. But they're our friend, and last week, we just missed them. They're back today. Jonathan from New Mexico. We have Graham from Dublin, Ireland. Johnny from Memphis, Tennessee. CJ from Leo, Indiana. There's a Leo, Indiana? Or is, there, is it CJ and Leo from Indiana? We have Mario from Mexico. We have Matthew from Claremont, South California, Southern Cal. We have Kenneth from Charleston. South Carolina. We have Borja from Madrid. We have Jordan Hoover. We have Merlin from Walla Walla, Washington. Is that it? That's it? Christine, that's it? Woo! Okay, everybody. Luke from Yorkshire, England. Luke from Yorkshire, England. Did I say that right? Yorkshire? Works for me. <laughs> okay. I want to thank Minnie. I want to thank Christine. I want to thank Chris, the unit cyber. I want to thank Brent Shively, answering all his questions online. And I want to thank you for tuning in once again. We really appreciate it. We've got one heck of a year planned for you for Festool Live. 
And uh, hopefully you have a great weekend. We're having some wonderful weather once again here in Indiana. Just, just beautiful outside. It's wet and muddy. Couldn't be better. So as we always say, we love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Can't wait for next week. I, have a, I already have it all written up. It's going to be fun. So be here next week, same time, 12 noon, Festool Live for Festool Friday. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. I think that's a wrap.